Good morning from Pastor Jonathan at Robert Stowe UMC. Welcome to today's Daily Devo. And uh, we're going to have a little church today, y'all. Uh, I was doing my devotional reading this morning and found myself in Isaiah chapter 6, a chapter of the Bible that I love, uh, that I want to share a little bit with you. But uh, I've also shared in the description of this video something I haven't done in a while, and that is a link to a song. So if you care to extend this devotional time, uh, if you find yourself with some time this morning, or if you want to come back later this evening and make this kind of a part one, part two, the text that I'm going to share with you this morning is from Isaiah chapter six. But I've also shared a song called Is He Worthy? And this song is a few years old now, uh, but it has just become a soundtrack that has been going through my mind and heart this week. Uh, I've been singing it devotionally, and it has led me to the passage that it is based on, which is Revelation 5. So I'm not going to read that passage to you. I'm going to encourage you to listen to the song and read it, because uh, Isaiah 6 reminds me of that scene. So in Isaiah 6, we have a, a throne room scene where the prophet Isaiah uh, comes into the temple and has a heavenly vision of the uh, the messengers of God, the seraphim. Uh, we're going to read what they look like and what they're doing and what they're singing uh, and how they interact with the prophet. In Revelation, we have a prophetic vision where the prophet is crying out who is worthy to open the scroll and the scroll being a symbol of God's law, God's word. Uh, and the one who turns out to be worthy is the lamb who has been slain. But we also find out that that lamb is the lion of Judah. So it's really exciting. And uh, so I want to read. I want to read Isaiah six. I want to share a brief word with you, and then I want to encourage you to listen to that song, and then maybe read Revelation five on your own. I told you we're going to have church. Here we go. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I have lived among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. The one, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. I want to offer you just a brief devotional word, and I'm actually taking this as a sermon soundbite, not from a sermon I preached, but a sermon from a friend of mine uh, called See Holy, Be Holy uh, by Matt O'Reilly. He's the pastor of Hope Hole UMC. So uh, Matt, if you're watching, brother, I love you, and I'm stealing your stuff. Again, uh, I've stolen from Matt before, but he had a sermon uh, that he has preached several times uh, that, that he told me about years ago that has just stuck in my mind. It's easy to remember, and it's See Holy, Be Holy. And the point is, uh, we tend to move towards what we focus on. Is that true for your life? Uh, whether we want to or not, the things that we tend to focus on, that's why it's important that if we're obsessing over something, which I'm guilty of many times, we pay attention to what it is that's pulling us gravitationally to obsess over it, because whether we want to or not, we will move towards what we focus on. Therefore, if we see God as holy, we will become like him. Many of us hear that invitation, even the invitation of Jesus, be holy therefore as your heavenly Father is holy, or be perfect, some translations say, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we say, that's never gonna happen, I can't do that. But when we ask ourselves, what if we could, how? The answer is we begin by focusing on God. If we see God for who he is, the holy, majestic, benevolent, almighty creator, we will end up moving towards what we focus on and we will even find ourselves becoming like him. So if you want to be holy, then take time today to focus on the holiness of God. Allow yourselves, uh, as much as I love that, that Christianity uh, puts our faith in a God we can know, and that the gospel is that God himself has chosen to reveal himself to us, to be known, and to know that we are known, as much as I love that, there is also this other side uh, of, of seeing God 
not as intimate and familiar, but as holy and majestic. And the truth is, we need that God too. We need a God we can know. We need an Abba Father that we can throw our hands up to and say, Dada, hold me, protect me, uh, be my provider, be my loving God, be my Father. But we also need that almighty, powerful, majestic God that we know if we spent an eternity trying to get to know, we would still never know everything about Him. He's mysterious. He's all-powerful. He's holy. He's perfect uh, in a way that our minds can hardly fathom. And we need that God too, uh, because we look around and we see so much of the contrary. We, so, we see so much uh, that is corrupt. We see so much darkness. We see so much reason to despair and to be discouraged. And when we look at God, we have incredible hope. We see light. We see joy. We see power that is greater than all that threatens us. So take time today uh, and then realize the good news. Isaiah points to Revelation. I believe, I should have fact checked myself before I say this, but I believe Isaiah is quoted more than any other of the prophets in Revelation. Check me on that. Uh, a lot of the prophets are quoted in, in Revelation. Revelation is full of quotes of Old Testament prophecy. But I know that Isaiah points more to uh, the Savior, Jesus, the Messiah, than any of the Old Testament prophets. I believe he also might be quoted in Revelation more than any of the other prophets. But even if he's not, that throne room scene where everyone looks at the earth and the prophet says, who is worthy? Because truth be told, when, when we look over the earth, we see no one worthy to open the scroll, the word of God, the law of God. But then we see the Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain, and we realize our Savior has come, our Messiah, our hope, the one who is bringing God's project of making all things new. So put your hope in Him today and rejoice that He has started that work and He is even doing that work in you. God loves you. God is for you. And this is Pastor Jonathan wishing you grace and peace.